radio station on the planet. WBND. WBND. WBND Radio. Home of the Brothers in Demand Radio Show. This is gospel music 24-7. Become the worst of Christ. The opinions expressed in this show do not reflect the views of WBND Studios or any associated affiliates. Coming to you from a biblical perspective, we are hoping and praying that we can help you to know God and to know Jesus in a more intimate way. You are listening to the Tabernacle Trinity Hall Show. WBND Radio. Welcome to WBND Radio. Radio. Tabernacle Trinity Hall. WBND Radio. Listen. Every Monday at 6.30 p.m. Tune in every Monday. Tabernacle Trinity Hall Show. Every Monday, 6.30 p.m. Hello, good afternoon, and good evening to all our listeners out there. God bless you today. Today was a wonderful day. Had a great weekend. Amen. And we pray that you had a great weekend as well. Thank you for joining us on the WBND radio, the number one internet radio on the planet. Well, we are the Tabernacle Trinity Hall Show with your host James and Pamela Harold and our producer Moses Blue. Amen. So today, baby, how have your day been? It's been busy. My day is busy every day, but I've been in a quiet state. Um, yesterday church was good, and so I'm, I've been listening, trying to feed on the the two sermons that Amen. I heard yesterday. So I'm, I'm in a quiet state. So you're in the desert, huh? Not because of anything you did wrong. No. You just right there in the matter of olive to it. You're just simmering right now, right? <laughs> simmering. Amen. How was my day? Because I thought you was going to ask. Amen. <laughs> it was great. Um, I had a great day. Actually, I really did. I had a um, Calipero Joy. When you fall to Dallas Temptation Day. Mm-hmm. I mean, really, I was going through something, and all of a sudden, I was on my phone, and it just popped up. You know, kind of pure joy, you're going through Dallas Temptation, you know, uh, because when your faith is tried, uh, having your faith to be tried, when your faith is tried by, because your faith has been tried. And so, it say, you know, let that faith have its way, yeah, you know, that good. it might become, what, patient. And I start thinking, I said, and I know I didn't quote that right, because I'm speedballing right now. But it popped up, and I saw it, and I'm like, oh, yeah, okay. And I just relaxed. Mm -hmm. You know, I said, I know God got it. You know, I said, no matter what it was, you know how it was, I say, God got it. Now, all I got to do is just let patient have her way, way. you know, so that I can be made what entire and perfect, not lacking anything. You know, being able to uh, walk through the storm, you know, through my um, valley of my shadow, my shadow, the valley, the valley the of the of death, shadow of, of death. death. Thank mm-hmm. you, thank you, thank you. Amen. Mm-hmm. Uh, my tongue is getting twisted today. Amen. But that's okay. That's all right. Uh, Moses, how have your day been? Oh, hey, amen. My day's been good, man. Listen, every day is a, a great day. It's a beautiful day in the Lord. And when you walk in it, you're just glad to be just part of the number, you know. So that's just me. I just count my ticket uh, and punch it and just continue to walk amen. accordingly. Amen. So we are walking from day to day. Listen, we are walking from faith blind to faith. faith. Amen. And you know what? What is hope when you can see? It's not hope. But hope is everything mm. when you walk by faith. Mm. Hoping that tomorrow will be a better day. Amen. Now here's the thing. I read that it say every day in heaven is going to be better than the day before. I also read that as it is in heaven, so shall it be on earth. Mm. Amen? Mm-hmm. And it's here on earth that we are walking under the blood of Jesus. Amen? Amen. It's here on earth where we are already children of God. Amen? It's here on earth where we are already been chastised by our heavenly Father. Amen? Amen. So God is an awesome God. He's an yes. awesome God. Sometimes it's hard to to really comprehend that because... Heaven is not going to have evil, and this, we're not going to have that enemy. Here on earth we do, mm-hmm. so sometimes it's hard to think how heaven is going to be when you're dealing with issues yes. like that. Amen. So it's, it's, Amen. Yes, it's, it's a battle from within, so you just 
It is the battlefield of the mind. The mm -hmm. battlefield of the mind. But you know what? Here's the thing. No eyes have seen, no ears have heard mm -hmm. what God has in store for us. Amen? Mm -hmm. We can't begin to imagine what life is like without us, without corrosion, stealing, lying, backbiting, prejudice, hate, anger. We don't we have no idea what that is. No idea. We can paint a picture. You know, of that perfect world. And the Lord actually had taken me to the end of the world where I saw the heaven and the streets of gold and the buildings was made out of different rubies and stuff. And I said, let's go. He said, well, you can't go. And that's what I learned that the flesh shall not be glorified. Mm. You know, you can't get there while you're in this flesh. And then, you know, I started studying the word about the tabernacle that's going to be made not with the not by man, the hands of man, but by the hands of the Holy God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. That 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 immortal body, that body that that doesn't corrode, that body that is not weak. You know, that body that shines and and stays sturdy. You know, that sturdy body you know a and glorified we, body amen, yes, a glorified body amen mm -hmm. amen so yes it is hard sometimes when you're going through but you know what as long as things like that keep happening when i'm going through my just scriptures fleshing up on my phone and i'm looking at it or somebody coming by with the word of god you know or i open the bible and 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 and, and, it, and it's fitting for what i need right now or i cut on the radio and somebody on the radio or sung something give me the straight that's 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 that's, that's what we call god short with you at least expect him to right. Right, because he knows exactly what we're going through and he knows what we need. Everything and sometimes we we think of our situation and we don't think about him because we're so engrossed in our thoughts and our problems and our concerns Damn. that it's hard to it is. put him It's hard. First. It's hard. Out of sight. Times. Out of mind, <laughs> right? It's hard to think about something. I do this and I do that and I can do this and I do that. Even us, the best of us, get mm -hmm. caught up in stuff, mm -hmm. you know, and everything. If we don't think somebody is looking, we are going to do things that we normally wouldn't do if somebody else is looking. I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to talk about family. Don't you know it's better that you're going to have a family gathering? Sometimes it's better to do it at a restaurant than it is to do it at home. Why is that? Because people behave when they're out in the public better than they do when they're at home. Ah. You know, so Are you talking about like, like the family members who like to show out? Yeah, the ones, they don't show out. They out, you know, because they like to show out. They're going to try and be the most sophisticated one mm. when you're out. But when you're in, they want to be the loudest one. So mm. you look like loud as now, right? Yeah, yeah, you got it. <laughs> just talking about it. You know, just talking about it. God is good, amen. That's amen. just a thought, God. It was just a thought for food, a food for thought, amen. <laughs> amen. <laughs> we talked about, <laughs> we talked about um, Peter. We talked about David. Mm -hmm. We talked about Nebuchadnezzar. And um, it, it was some things that we do want to um, go back and touch on talking about them but right now we want to talk about we want to talk about warnings mm. and the reason is because it was brought to my attention somebody asked me how do a man know when he's about to fall into sin and my answer was that every man meaning woman and man whenever you read the word men m-e-n in the bible nine times out of ten is talking about both male and female and i say with every Man has their own their own temptation, cause God doesn't tempt us. We are tempted by our own mm. desires. Desires, mm. Amen. And so every man has his own temptation. But we're going to talk about um, mornings. So how are we going to do this? We're going to talk about. Y'all know it was two tribes. It was the northern tribe, Israel, mm -hmm. and it was the southern tribe, Judah, okay? And the northern tribe was ten tribes, and the southern tribe was two tribes. Now, here's a trivia question for the listeners by email. I want you to send this to Tabernacle Trinity Hall at gmail.com. That's Tabernacle Trinity Hall at gmail.com. Dot com. Now here's the question. How come Judah was two tribes? How did they become two tribes? Because the northern tribe was ten. So it was twelve tribes. And then there's Judah. But Judah 
is known as two tribes. What was the two tribes and how did they become two tribes? That's to be answered by email. So what we're trying to do, guys, we're trying to motivate you to begin to use that email to start sending questions or things that you want to share. And we're going to read it. I want to read what the majority are saying. Yeah, I want to, to be read. a part of the show. Amen. This is a family gathering. Yes. Because we are the family of God. Amen. And we have to encourage each other. And this is, even though we're speaking it, they can be able to share something that we can eat on and be blessed. And that comes from Pam, guys. Y'all hear what she said? So we can try and participate. And what Let's can they email at? Uh, they go tabernacle trinity hall at gmail.com. Tabernacle trinity hall at gmail.com is how you can email us, guys. And like real family, we get it all the time. People see us, hey, you guys, y'all doing a great thing. You know, it's helping people, you're helping us and everything. That's good. Thank you. But, you know, send us email. Hey, guys, you're doing a great job, this and that and everything. You know, help us to be able to benchmark what we are doing. Amen. Because it feeds us with information. Like, we're talking about warnings. This was something that was asked. And so we go back to that stuff because all of that stuff we're talking about is the going through part, mm. the in-between stuff. Amen. So even though we are using the book Harold's co uh, Application Commentary for Deuteronomy that you can get from Amazon, you can get the um, hardback for two ninety-seven, enough seven ninety-seven, or you can get the ebook for two ninety-nine. Okay, and that's what we are going by. We are at the first using the first four. Verses out of the book of uh, Moses talking to Israel. They've been in the desert for 40 years. So we're talking about warnings, you know, warnings. And, uh, and apparently Israel did not yield or yield to the warnings because they took a 11-day journey into a 40-year journey. And I okay. think it depends on your relationship, too, with your mornings. Because if you're not in touch with God at that moment because your desire is leading you away from him, you're not going to feel the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. You're not going to feel his guidance and his nudging. But if you are in him and you have that relationship and it's active at that moment, then when you do something, like if you told a lie or, or you mistreated your husband or said something wrong, you're going to instantly feel that remorse to where you're going to want to try to correct it. So That's I think good. it's based on where you are with your relationship with him. Mm -hmm. Amen. And it is. She said a key word there. Active. You know, she said active because, like she said, she made a point, you know, some are not in Christ and so they're not being led by the Holy Spirit. God chastises his own. He, does, he doesn't chastise those that are not, not of him. And then she said, spoke about the ones that are in Christ. She used the word active. So active can fit to the non-believer and active can fit to the believer. And the reason why I say that is because if you are active, then you are where you are supposed to be mm. in Christ. You're not a non-believer and you're not just a Christian just going through the motions, but you're never growing. You're never applying the word to you. So you, you can't be led because your heart becomes hardened. And Israel did that. Go ahead, baby. See what you're about to say. I was, so. I've heard you know, a long time ago that a lot of believers have made Christ their Savior. But a lot of them have not come to terms to make him their Lord. Mm. And, and, go ahead, baby. I'm sorry. I keep cutting the cross. <laughs> Moses said, oh, and I thought you was, good. I thought I mean, you was She, 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 she and, the nail in the head right there. And it bec you, he becomes your Lord when you start building that relationship with him. Because he, he, he does save us, but Christ didn't do all that he did on that cross just to save us. God created us for a relationship. He did. God created us for a relationship. That we that he might be glorified, and that calls for a relationship. Amen. Um, with that being said, we're going to um, look at Second Kings chapter seventeen, verse thirteen, and we're talking about warnings. You know, how many times do we have to get a warning about something that we know that we shouldn't be doing? 
but yet we do it anyhow. You know, uh, how do we know when we are ready to fall into sin? It's because of the warnings that we get. When you're in the Word of God. And you don't have to be in the Word of God to know what a warning is. That's right. Because you have the law, mm -hmm. too, right? So, you know, we have to obey the law of the land, right? And we also have to obey God's law. But he said that he, he takes away the heart of stone and he gives us a heart of flesh. Mm -hmm. So instead of him writing his law on the stones, the two stones that Moses was writing on, the, the, the hardness of the heart. He takes that away and he writes that law on the flesh part of our hearts. And we are aided with that through the inner man, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God. Amen. Which my wife, sometimes you heard her talk about the Trinity here. God the Father, God the Son. But then she said, but most people forget about God the Holy Spirit, you know, and it's hard to forget about God the Holy Spirit when you are active in Christ. Amen. So because the Spirit leads you, and we're talking about hardening of the heart, that we're active, you know, and even those that non-believers and believers that are not active in the Word, the reason why you don't feel uh, the presence of the Holy Spirit is because of the hardening of the heart. Or it could be also too that, and, and it took me a while to get where I am now in the Lord, it's when you when you going through your trial and tribulation and you haven't really built that relationship with mm -hmm. the Lord first, then your thoughts overtake mm -hmm. Um, what you're going through. That's right. You, you don't That's think right. about God. You don't think of his power. You don't think of his word. You don't think of that, that he, he delivered you out of this last week. You don't think of that because Amen. you're so engrossed. And then it's it's really important for the prayers of the saints to really pray for our fa family members, whether we know them or not. It's simply because that's the time where the enemy tries to slip in mm. and puts those thoughts in a way that you don't want to go. That's how Satan discourages us and wants to show that, hey, your faith is nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, she says something about praying for family members. And that's important because, see, sometimes we can get so heavenly bound that, uh, you know, uh, 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 they they doing what they're doing and they need to straighten up. And we forget that somebody prayed for us, too. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you got to pray protection over those that are not walking in Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, Father, protect my son who's out there doing drugs in the name of Jesus. Put a boundary around him long enough to protect him mm -hmm. so that somebody and send people his way to plant seed and to uh, 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 water that seed so that you might find fit to make that growth come possible in my child, you know. Mm -hmm. But we get, you know, uh, nobody did that for me. Yes, somebody prayed for you. Somebody prayed for me. Somebody prayed for everybody I know that is under Christ. Somebody mm -hmm. prayed for that mm -hmm. person. So we shouldn't be so hard and self-righteous that we don't know how to be humble and have love in, in our hearts. Jesus didn't do that when he was going to the cross. Amen. And Jesus didn't do that while he was on the cross. Because right. one of the things that I'm seeing now that is... Um seem to be an outrage is people are so depressed mm. that people are going into this depressing mode to the point where Satan is using that tool that's causing a lot of people to commit suicide. Mm. They just give up. How, how, how do they get there? Because their relationship wasn't built with the Lord or they weren't even, um, I guess, into the family it, for, for whatever reason. Because I look at Robin Williams and all of them. It's not just um, adults, but as younger kids where they're taking their lives. Yeah, a lot of times when, when we look at life um, and really miss the mark on what our purpose and our calling is, that's when all hope is gone. Because I like what, what uh, Rev said when we talk about faith. Faith is the substance. That's okay. something you can hold on to. Yes. The substance of things hoped Hopeful. for. So you know that God's going to deliver. You just have to walk it out as Amen. though he did. Right. So it's a substance of things hopeful, but the evidence of things not seen. So Amen. though we don't see it, we know that everything comes from the unseen. So we can pull 
on those things of heaven because God promised those things to us. So when we lose Amen. focus on purpose, we have nothing else to live for. I want to read something. I know y'all. I want y'all to keep y'all fingers at Second Kings, but I want want to read something um, uh, that they was talking about. First uh, Peter chapter five, verse uh, six, seven, and um, uh, and um, eight. It says, "Humble yourself, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that He may lift or exalt you up in due Come time, on. or at the proper time." In other words, you know, don't get ahead of God. Whatever it is you're going through, learn how to give it to God. Do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow, you know, is sufficient of itself. It has its own problems. And if we can learn to trust God for now, right now, but then we'll really learn to understand that we really have nothing to worry about. And then it goes on to say, cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Cast all your worries upon him because he cares for you. If you can just give God your worries, but then you'll find that you can go on through life and have fun and be happy and not worried about what John, Joe, and Dick is doing and Jane, Susan, and, and, and Jen is doing, you know? And, and the key is to, yeah. to know that he says he cares for you. He's cares. you got to really know that. Yeah within your heart that he really does. Yeah, he's real. He's not out of sight, out of mind. Just because you don't see him, it doesn't mean that he's not there. Right. And then it means be self-controlled and alert. Be sober. Be alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a warring lion looking for someone to devour. That's why we have depression and all of that stuff. Satan used that stuff. That's a tool of the devil mm -hmm. and that tool has no power against you mm -hmm. unless you give in to, to it. it. He has no power over you. And then I'm going to read one more. It say resist him, the mm -hmm. devil. Mm -hmm. Stand firm in the faith because you know that your brothers throughout, your brothers, everybody that's in Christ, throughout the world are going through the same kind of suffering that you're going through. You're not going through nothing that nobody else has already been through, going through, or will go through. Mm -hmm. But you'll be able to look back and help somebody else go through it. Amen. But you got to learn how to get through it first by depending on God because you want to go through it if you're going through it, whether you're depending on God or not. So it's best to go ahead on and depend on God, amen, while you're going through it. Who promised not to forsake you, nor will he ever leave you. If anybody's going to be turning our backs, it'll be us turning our back on God. But let's go to warnings. Let's talk about warnings. How do a man know when he's good at following the sand? Because he done had upteen warnings before he did it. Uh -oh. That's how he know. And he still chooses to do it anyhow. He's not he's not heeding to the warnings. He's constantly going forward. He's plowing through it just like a storm. Think of the wind blowing so hard and you're barely able to walk, but you still stubbornly, I'm gonna beat this. And the wind blows harder and you still trying to beat it. And the wind still blowing harder, you still trying to beat it. And all of a sudden the wind stops. And you got so much force going through, what you wanna do? You wanna fall on your face. Mm. You want to, it's like playing tug of war. You want to fall on your face. If somebody pulling, you pulling against each other, the person that let go, the other person usually will fall on their face. If you're on a seesaw, somebody hop off one end, you're going to fall on your butt. Mm. That's what you're going to do. But you had so many warnings prior to that, and you fail to yield to it. So what happens? Your heart begins to get hardened and hardened and hardened, and your flesh begins to take over because that heart that God takes from us is a hard heart, a heart of stone. Mm -hmm. And when you refuse to heed to his word, that flesh begins to harden and harden. He did it with the Pharaoh it was that Moses read to. He, he hardened his heart for his sake so that he can be magnified. So we need to be careful that God doesn't harden your heart so that he has to be glorified. But here we're reading the book of Isaiah. Anybody want to say anything? I'm good to yeah, I was going to say real, 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 uh, real, real quick what Pam talked about earlier about depression to your point is where when 
we're not made to hold a lot of stuff in. No, we're not. We're, we are made to release. That's why, why, why Christ says, bring all things, cast all things to me and at my feet. Because when we cast them down, now we have nothing to hold on to. We have to depend on him. But when we say, I got it, I can do it, and we box all the pressures of this world, it causes us to either be depressed, it causes us to go through a downward spiral effect, which then we we end up going all around in circles when Christ says, you know what, come to me and I'll give you all, I'll give you rest, I'll Amen. give you peace, peace Amen. beyond understanding. Amen. And you guys know what it feels like when you give something to the Lord and it feels like a bird being lifted off lift your off. shoulder, yes. you feel lighter. Mm -hmm. You feel, you actually feel lighter. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's a good one. That's a good conversation. Uh, that's a good conversation. Praise God. Praise God. Second Kings chapter 17 verse 13 starts off like this. The Lord warned Israel and Judah through all his prophets and seers. The Lord warned Israel and Judah through all his prophets. Who was the prophets back then? Isaiah, Hosea, and Micah. Okay? And he warned them, Turn from your evil ways. Observe my commands and decrees in accordance with the entire law that I command your fathers to obey and that I deliver to you through my servants, the prophets. But they would not listen and were as stiff-necked, hard-headed, hard-hearted as their fathers who did not trust in the Lord their God. Why are we disobedient? Because we do not trust in God. Well, I trust God. I'm not perfect. And because when I don't listen to him, do that mean that I don't trust him? God is talking about this. The gift of God is what? Eternal life. Mm -hmm. The wages of sin is what? Death. Death. Now, if you don't believe that, keep doing what you're doing. And when the time comes, then you shall see. And a lot of situations that we put ourselves in is a road to a dead in. Mm. And a lot of times you don't see that until you get to that dead end. The first thing you say, man, why did I do that? Why did I choose to do that? Why did I go that way in the first place? Because now you're digging your way back out. And sometimes it's so hard to dig your way back out of something because you forget to throw the dirt under your feet. You still, you're taking your dirt, you're the hole, you're throwing it out of the hole, you're making yourself go deeper and deeper in that hole. But what you should be doing is taking the dirt that's on the outside, putting it back in that hole, patching that hole back up, stepping on top of that dirt so you can lift yourself above that. Because before God got me, I was in seeking ground. Mm. But then once I heed to the word of God and gave my life to God, now I'm walking on what? Solid ground. Amen. And so you got to keep your ground solid in the first place. Amen. That's the that's a warning. Amen. That's one. And, and then you have to realize too, and I and I keep saying this over and over again, it goes back because you know there's there's stages in, in our Christian family. You know, some some are babes in Christ, some are infants, some are newcomers, some are teenagers. Yeah. Some you know. Yeah. So it all depends on where you are, and that's why I feel uh, I, because I pray every morning, and I pray for the God family. Yes. Not just my immediate family, which I yes. pray every morning, but I pray for the God family because He knows exactly what everybody's going through at that stage in that moment. We don't, so Amen. I just lift the family up to Him and let Him have His way because you never know that that I may be the only one that's in my family, and I don't have nobody to pray for me. Yeah. So maybe somebody who don't even know me, God will hear it and. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You know, God, he's like, he said that the ones that are expected to be mature, when you correct them, you usually are harder on them than you are than a baby in Christ because they need to learn. They need to grow. And you don't want to discourage them. So if you see me doing something and you know I don't know better, you're not going to come to me as easy as you would 
if somebody just got saved yesterday and you seeing them doing the same thing. You come to me, now you know better. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of times we do that with our kids once they get a certain age. Now you know better, you know. But when they do something for the first time, no. No, no, no means no. You don't do that. That's bad for you. That can hurt you. But the older we get in Christ, the more we're supposed to know better and the harder the chastising become to us. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of times now, like Pam, you might, no matter who the person is, uh, go about, about it in a kind way. You know, you might do that. Moses might see a person and he might not say anything. Mm. I might see a person and I may consider well, he's supposed to know better. You know, so I don't have to go to him with a lesson. But then I may consider another person where they don't know better. I got to go to them with a lesson. You know, so we do have different manifestation because we all walk on a different spiritual level. Right. Because we all have, we all have, we are who we are. We have individual talents, mm -hmm. individual gifts, individual inter in in intellect, intellectual, right? Mm -hmm. We have um, individual character, individual personality, individual thoughts, even identity twins that look alike don't act. Alike, mm -hmm. right? Even though they can feel each other, but here's the thing: all the warnings they got, and we're going to get it to close because y'all going to have to meet with us next Monday. Praise God! Uh, same channel, same time, six thirty. Don't forget to send your, your email on the questions. Don't forget. So, so send them, send them in. Your we'll email. The, the question. question. The question was: How did? Why is? When did? Judah become two tribes, and what was the two tribes? That's the question. When did Judah become two tribes, and what are the two tribes? Amen. Amen. So we are on WBND, where you want to meet us next week. WBND Radio, where our favorite out of the bills, where we can say to you that you, you are, are so, so beautiful. beautiful. Be blessed. Be Amen. Blessed. And warnings, warnings. This is Gospel Music 24-7.